דובי לנץ, שלום. שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. world music in Israel and uh, Israel's place in the world music scene. Okay. So the floor is yours, my friend. So, uh, <coughs> as you know, Israel is an immigrant country. It came from at least 80 traditions and cultures to Israel. And uh, each community brought with her the roots, the musical roots, the instrument, the rhythm, and uh, the Israeli music, uh, the world outside of Israel is very curious about Israeli music, because it seems to them that in such a place, with so many influences, it must be something new born, at, born every day, something interesting, something intriguing, and that's really the fact. Are you referring to what is uh, fondly known as fusion? Yeah, fusion. Sometimes confusion? Yes, sometimes confusion, sometimes... Look, every community that came to Israel, that made Aliyah, they uh, kept their music in the community. The younger generation that wanted to be instant Israel, they were a little bit ashamed of the music of the elderly people. So they went to rock, to pop, but they didn't want, if they were musicians, they didn't want to deal with the music from home. It takes always a generation, 20 years, Still they understand that the treasure they have in their hand. So they go back. So they go back. They rediscover the roots. Yes. And, uh, and you see that after an Aliyah, after a vague of Aliyah came to Israel, there is no an instant uh, influence on Israeli music, but it will take time. And I, if, if I can describe that, what is happening in Israel music is, as I like to cook as well, it's like slow cooking. You know, it's very, it's very in now, the slow cooking, to put a pot on, 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 on fire, on slow fire, and the music, each musician comes and put inside this pot his ingredients, his herbs, and when you taste the stew, at the end of the day, each day there is a new taste. And you taste something that you never tasted before. And so, it's like, uh, in German you say Eintopfgericht, or Kasserol in French, where you put everything into this pot and something very new comes out. And that's Israeli music. And very rich in flavors. Very rich in flavors and... and uh, very diverse. And what, what is happening, you can take like Israeli bands and you'll see that each one of the musicians comes from another tradition, yes? You can have a band that the percussionist is from Uruguay, the singer is from Yemen, the wood player is... Uh, also from Yemen, there are strings uh, that came from East Europe, and everything mixes. That was what makes Israeli music so so intriguing and and good. And we have really every day something happens every day. Uh, new bands, uh, something to wait for, and I think that the world start to discover it. 
Because once Israel, or maybe let us say Jews, were like in classical music, they were the dominant. But now. Still are. Still are, yes, but uh, it was time that, that even other genre of music should be dominant, and today, when New York is conquered by all the Israeli jazz musicians, and we have so many wonderful talents. Avishai Cohen is one name. Avishai Cohen and Avishai Cohen, one of the bass players, one of the trumpet players, and Anat Cohen, and Eli De Gibri, and you just have to mention them. And uh, I'm always joking that if you come to New York and you said you're from Israel, they ask you, uh, which instrument do you play? <laughs> Because so it, it is like this. And, uh, But uh, also in world music, because people came from so many places in the world. You have from Yair Dalal, it came from Iraq, and now an Israeli rock star like Dudu Tassa that, that went back to the roots of his grandfather. And with the Kuwaitis, with his album. Kuwait, yeah. and, and, and people are discovering their roots and They're putting it into new production, into, into new sounds, and it sounds amazing. So this is very exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting well, to... Look, I'm always saying that I was lucky to be born here. If I take just uh, the case of, of, of being in a place where every day something happening, not just in music. I could really... I, I would prefer if it would be just in music. <laughs> Maybe the word, maybe the word to describe it is hectic. Yes, we have an hectic life. And never a dull moment. And what is amazing, you look at the size of the population. I don't think you can find the parallel anywhere else. Look, I, I am always traveling. I could travel every month to another place in the world for, for exposure to other countries' music, yes. And then I did the first exposure with the foreign office. Uh, to Israeli music, the people came for four days and they saw 35 bands and, and they came at the end, they came, you are crazy, there are seven million people and so many talents and such a variety. Unbelievable. And then they asked me, how come it's such a place which we are reading about Israel in the newspaper and it... For it, the wrong reasons? Yes. No, you see a promile of the whole picture. You don't see the whole picture. Right. And, and where do, do you have the time to make music? So I was telling them, well, we are killing three Palestinians and then we are going to, to make some music. I'm sure that won't be that. I hope it was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke, of course. <laughs> did, did they laugh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> But no, really, uh, we, from, from <coughs> young, you have schools, right? schools from six years old children that are trained into arts, into music, and you have really the education here, the cultural education, it's very high level. And then everybody is going to Berkeley or the new school of music in New York, if they are good, and uh, we see the results. Dubi, you've mentioned the exposures, also known as the showcases, to which you have contributed a lot and you still keep contributing. Uh, we remember uh, fondly the last one, when one uh, major uh, guest was so impressed that he is now dedicating his own festival, jazz festival, to Israeli music. Yes, not jazz festival, it's jazz uh, market or jazz fair. It's just ahead in just Bremen, ahead. In, in, in German. And, and uh, if I may, one more, uh, one more effect or influence of such an exposure, and we read it in one of the most important magazines for music, yeah. Songlines, what Joe Frost has written at least twice now. So yes, yeah, the, the people are amazed what is happening, because If you see what is published in the newspaper or what you see on television about Israel, you don't even imagine that 
we have time for culture. <laughs> this is the time to mention that Dubi Lens, in addition to being a music lover, First of all, I'm working in the radio for 40 years. <laughs> working in the radio. But Dubi Lenz is also an educator. Because since 1982, if I'm not wrong, you have this wonderful program, a call Zorem. Everything Zorem flows. Nice, yes. Everything flows. <laughs> Everything flows, yes. Flows. And basically what you have done, and I think it's highly important in order to understand what happened to Israeli music, you have brought, due to your extensive knowledge, from all over the world, world music to Israel. Yes, not just world music. I just showed people that you can combine all kinds of music from everywhere, all genres of music, like classical and jazz and world music and pop. You can combine them in one program, even not without speaking a lot. Just to, to see that if music is good, every, everything is flowing. Everything is connected to everything. And uh, now as also the, uh, the artistic director of the Red Sea Jazz Festival in Israel, it's, uh, the program is like this, very eclectic, because I believe that people that love music, they have an open mind and they have an open head to listen to all kinds of music. And we have also this advantage that our head is open because our forefathers, they came from everywhere in the world and so we, we are already used from childhood to listen not just to the middle of the road radio but also to, to things that are tradition and, and uh, culture from abroad. So the key word will be openness. Openness, yes. Yes, that's our motto. What can we wish uh, Dubi Lens for the future, the near future? The f of course, we wish, we wish peace. <laughs> you see, I, in uh, the, first, the first Red Sea Winter Edition, I uh, just, as, as the festival, the Red Sea Festival is on the Red Sea, it's on, in Eilat, it's on the border between uh, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Israel. I uh, brought like two brothers from Egypt to play with two Israeli brothers. Uh, they call this concert Brother for Brotherhood. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, and uh, the two Egyptians came from Australia, but never mind, they were Coptic. We consider them Egyptians. No, they, they were born in Egypt. So, uh, my dream is to have this festival in Eilat with participants from Egypt, from Jordan, from Saudi Arabic and from other Arabic, but the concerts that, I don't know, I, I hear now all the voices from over the border and I'm not sure it will happen. But we join at you. Least, at least if they let me, let us make our festival for ourselves. <laughs> But we join you on this wish and we would like to thank you very much, Dubi, for taking the time. We know how busy you are. So uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom.